Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We've made it past the 4th of July. We're now moving into prime vacation, summer camp time. Time to sit back on the patio. That's what yeah, we've got here. Like lemonade and iced tea. I would like, Mark likes Arnold Palmer's, I know. Yeah, that'd be good. This is an item that's been uh, provided by Audeville Furniture for our 2015 auction. So it actually does come with an umbrella and another chair. And lemonade. We'll throw in some lemonade if, the, if you're a high bidder. I have country time in my office. I'll donate that. Just well, we powder. are now we halfway through <laughs> 2015. We are a few months away from the auction. The year is moving quickly. Did you guys know that this month is Air Condition Appreciation <laughs> Month? As a Syracuse so. grad, you should. The carrier, the carrier dome, yeah. They probably invented that holiday. Uh, it's National Hot Dog Month, Women's Motorcycle Month. July 10th is Don't Step on a B Day. So you're supposed to just swat them on July 10th? Why don't you try that and let us know how it works. Hey, if you're wearing a glove. I don't think you should ever step on a bee barefoot. That should be every day. That's wise words. Wise words from Andrew. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Yeah, this also is, Spencer. this week is also Be Nice to New Jersey Week. Did you know we have a little bit of New Jersey right here <laughs> at TV44? That means we need to be extra nice to Matt Finkel this For an week. entire week? For an entire week. So that's not just a day holiday. That's 150. Second of so our lives here. If you see Matt here. Finkel out and about this week, you need to be extra nice to him because it's be nice to New Jersey. But he's from New Jersey, by the way. I think um, they got that. Problem. Speaking of Matt, he's got a special story for us today on a local pastor and his family who are strongly involved with the local summer swim program. It's prime swimming season for about 700 athletes, ages five all the way up to 18. And this week marks the completion of the WOAL summer swim season in the region. And Matt has a story on that coming up. Looking forward to that. Also on today's show, the National Sheriff of the Year is from right here in Northwest Ohio, Sheriff John Lenhart, given the award in Baltimore last week. We will have an interview with him and see him receive that honor. We also have an interview with John Ondo, who has just completed another school documentary. But first, let's take a look at today's verse. Jennifer? Our verse today reminds us that in all things we do, we are to do so with a heavenly mindset. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 through 33. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the Western Ohio Aquatics League hosts a competitive swim season every summer in this area. It's a program largely run by volunteer parents. As Matt Finkel tells us in today's OIO in the Community segment, a pastor and his family are among those important volunteers. Go Westside! For hundreds of area kids, the summer is all about swimming. I've been swimming for a while, and my whole family does, and a lot of my friends do, so that's just fun. It's just a nice bonding time. Xavier is a member of the West Side Wave summer swim team in Lima. The girls and boys range in age from five years old to seniors in high school, and it's a family affair for the Bookers. My oldest son is 16, and he started swimming, swimming when he was seven, and uh, we've been at it ever since. Meets begin in June and conclude in the middle of July with the championship meet in Wapakoneta. Swimmers also practice five days a week, often with a morning and an evening session. So it's safe to say that the summer swim season would not be possible without the hard work of the parents. We can't run a meet without our parents. We need 50, 60 parents sometimes to run a meet. So we, we have to have them. It takes a whole lot of volunteers, uh, timers, runners, people to work the computer, um, starters, officials. Nobody here is getting paid. And so it's a labor of love. The Booker family has been a staple of the West Side swim team. Brian's duties also include announcing at the meets. It's a total team effort all around, including familiar faces who have graduated from team member to coach. I had swam previously here for seven years before I became a coach, and just the coaches have kind of, before me, have picked me out to take their place. I think I've done a good job modeling myself after them, and it's been really, really fun. With that type of commitment, the swimmers show great improvement in the water, and that's by far the most rewarding part of the program. It is fun. You know, I've done this enough years that I'm able to watch groups of kids kind of 
uh, uh, move forward together and to watch the improvement. You know, the little ones from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, that's fun. But over the years, I mean, I've watched some tremendous, tremendous swimmers. We have two state champions that are from this area. Taking the time to work with, it, work with them and then fix it, that is really worthwhile to coach the little kids. It's so cute to see them jump off the boards and do a belly flop, but then have to work on it the next day, and then they get all excited that they're not doing belly flops anymore. <laughs> Everyone's pitching in and the kids are thriving in the pool. So a real sense of community has developed at West Side Swim and Racquet Club. It's just fun, like we have swim buddies that like we have to get gifts for and they get gifts for us. I call it our swimming family. It's, it, we're a family, we're friends, we see each other all summer, we see each other all winter, and it, yeah, it's a tight-knit community. It's great to be a swim parent, it's great to, to help create this experience that our kids can have, and, 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 uh, and summer swim's supposed to be fun, so that's what we're doing. Reporting in Lima for Faith and Friends, I'm Matt Finkel. Thank you, Matt. Love seeing families come together for both work and play. Well, moving now to the subject of law enforcement. In the United States, there are more than 3,000 sheriffs, and every year, the National Sheriff's Association chooses just one to honor as the National Sheriff of the Year. This year, that honor goes to someone right here in Northwest Ohio. Jennifer has more. It's the 75th anniversary of the National Sheriff's Association. Hundreds of law enforcement professionals attended this year's event in Baltimore, Maryland, including many from right here in Ohio. But this year's attendance also drew many non-law enforcement attendees because of this man, Shelby County Sheriff John Lenhart. Family, friends, and fellow elected officials made the long drive to Maryland to honor a Jackson Center farmer who embodies small-town values and a strong work ethic. Sheriff John Lenhart is the 2015 National Sheriff of the Year. A standing ovation for a man who has devoted more than half his life to the profession of law enforcement. His resume includes serving as the superintendent of the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, assistant attorney general and director of law enforcement under Richard Cordray, and several presidential advisory appointments. He's also spent some time as the elected sheriff. A criteria to win this award is to be an active sheriff. Lenhart ironically retired after 25 years as sheriff of Shelby County, but then in 2011, he was back in office as the Shelby County Sheriff. It was October 2011 when retired Sheriff Lenhart again became active Sheriff Lenhart, appointed to the position after criminal charges were filed against previous Sheriff Dean Kimple. A lifelong Democrat, Lenhart changed to the Republican Party and ran for and then won the 2012 sheriff's race. Since then, he's focused on improving the budget, overall morale, of course, fighting crime, and something that's garnered him national attention, his plan to put law enforcement into the Shelby County schools and train the teachers how to defend their students. Almost three years ago after Sandy Hook, I was asked by a news reporter about school safety, active shooters, and she asked why I would put deputy sheriffs in schools, why would we do Alice training, and why would we train and arm teachers in our schools. And I told a reporter, I can't think of anything more important that we should be doing than step up and protect the 10,000 children in our county. As a sheriff, I couldn't think of anything else. I said, do you think that maybe I should have waited for the state or federal government to find a solution? Or, how about if I wait for somebody to figure out the psychology of a killer, or maybe I should do a poll for the public? I didn't expect or need an answer. Uh, I'm like my father once said, those that are closest to the problem, they certainly know the solutions too. Once the youngest sheriff in Ohio, and now the oldest, Lenhart isn't slowing down. This Ferris E. Lucas Sheriff of the Year honoree still stands on the front lines devoted to improving safety conditions for those in his county and beyond. Sheriffs, you can truly make a difference in the lives of citizens that you understand and appreciate the priorities and the culture of the citizens that, they, that you serve. On a daily basis, we are given an opportunity to make a positive difference in the world ways greater than we ever can imagine, simply by the virtue of the positions that we hold. Thank you, Jennifer, and certainly congratulations to Sheriff John Lenhart on that honor. 
Well, we are honored now to be joined with John Ondo from Ondo Media. It's always good to have you back in the TV44 studios. It's home to me. I love being back here. <laughs> and maybe you've already seen this on TV44, some school documentaries on both the Elida and the Gomer School Districts. Well, John has a new school biography documentary on Botkins. And I guess first off, let's start with what with why Botkins? Uh, well, they had heard about the Gomer and Elida documentaries uh, and Connie Schneider, who's the superintendent of Botkins, had just gotten through putting together their new school building and contacted me and said, we really would like to document uh, the Botkins building and, and the history of our area. And uh, they got some local funding from a grant uh, from the Louis Sheet Fund and made it possible. And so for the past two years, we've been uh, putting together a really neat story. Uh, what you're seeing there is the original Botkins school that was built in 1896, I believe. And we tell the story of Botkins. It's a neat, uh, it's a really neat, these stories of these small schools are so cool. I really enjoy doing these. And Botkins just recently in January of 2015 opened up a new school building. You were there for the first day at the old building, the last day at the old building, and the, the first day at the new building. And, and I tell you, when you watch this documentary, you will not be able to watch this without a smile on your face and perhaps a tear in your eye because you really caught the emotion of that move. You know, s schools are very important. Buildings are very important to all of us. It, it, it's where our lives, it's where milestones are made, prom and sports. And for especially for a town like Botkins, populations, I think 1,600. Shelby County is a tight community. And for them to move out of a building they've been in for three generations into a new building, it, it's heartbreaking. They have to say goodbye to a building that was torn down and then move into a new building full of new memories. And uh, great stories, small town, all the great stuff that, that, that really makes West Central Ohio a special place. And we were able to capture a lot of that with the interviews. And uh, we're going to be debuting the full one hour film on July 12th. So anyone, you know, anyone who's got a connection with Botkins, you should come to July 12th at 3 p.m. to the new school building and be a part of that. Um, and if you just love, you know, the, the culture of our area here, come anyway. It's free it, uh, and be a part of it. And it's it's going to be a neat, uh, neat time. Part of the Trojan journey discusses the Ward School, which was a Catholic school, a parochial school in Bakken's that was actually integrated into the Bakken School District. Really unique situation. I remember sitting down and they told us, well, we have a Catholic school that was involved with the public school. And I'm thinking, wow, that's something that doesn't happen today. But they had a, a, an elementary school that was Catholic run and uh, and they were in the yearbook. You see pictures there. The, the nuns would come over and be a part of the, the public basketball games and the assemblies of the if the elementary school for the Catholic school had an assembly, the public school went over and supported it. And they just had a neat relationship that worked very well there. And even after the, the Catholic school was sort of absorbed into the public school, the nuns continued on as public school employees for a while. So just a really neat thing and where a lot of people may raise their eyebrows to it in today's culture, they, they thought it was great. It was it was their hometown. It was all folks from their hometown and it worked rather well. I'm sure there were plenty of memories made in the cafeteria and, and where the food was prepared, but when you say the kitchen in Botkins, you're talking about something else. You're not talking about a cafeteria. You're talking about this gym and, you know, covering sports. You, you know how important some of these classic gyms are. In Shelby County, when this thing was built in 1957, it was the largest gymnasium in, Shel in Shelby County. What was unique about it was because Botkins just kind of kept their budget very simple. They, they didn't believe in a lot of gold-plated doorknobs or anything <laughs> like that. They didn't put a wood floor in. They put in a tile floor. And if you don't play basketball, and I'm not a big basketball person, but you, you've got a little bit of a spring with a wood floor. There's no spring with a tile floor. It would get condensation on it in the winter. And it gave Botkins a unique advantage when they had basketball games because you couldn't cut, you'd slide. So we have some interesting interviews in there talking about that floor and the rivalry between Fort Loramie and Jackson Center and some of the other schools in Shelby County. I know Spencerville and some of the other schools here in Allen County played Botkins. So if you've, uh, if you've got a background with uh, Botkins playing sports or anything, you're going to enjoy this because they're going to talk a little bit about their, their kitchen and what made it so special. Also had a red tile floor, right. if you can imagine. That's kind of like the, uh, the Boise State of, uh, <laughs> of basketball in Shelby County. You touched on a little bit before with the Catholic school integration, but the role that faith plays in Bakken and in several other, other communities around West Central Ohio, and, and that is instilled into the kids from a young age. You know, the thing about it, I, uh, the, one of the first mornings I went there to shoot and um, to do the initial filming, uh, I got there in the morning and the bell rings and the first thing that I hear is the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. And I almost teared up because it's so sad that that doesn't happen anymore. 
Um, uh, the, their, the faith is very important in that area. They, uh, when they dedicated the new building, they had a, a prayer service that was sponsored by the students. Um, it, it, is, it is a town that is unapologetic about faith being a part of its community. And uh, uh, you just, you just got to be kind of proud of what, what that town is doing. And it really, it's, it's symbol symbolic of the culture of our area. Yeah, our country is doing a lot of interesting things right now, but you know, there's something about West Central Ohio. We're, we're very much grounded in faith and values that uh, go back many times, and that's kind of reflected in this film you'll see. All right, thank you very much, John. Of course, the public showing, it's open to anybody. You can attend that at Bakken School in July. If you're from Fort Loramie, we do ask you that you return the Trojan that has been stolen numerous times <laughs> yes. from Bakken. There will also be a special version airing of the Trojan Journey during Faith and Friends coming up July 19th through the 25th. Well, some special programming coming up this weekend. With more on that, here's Amber Chambers with a Movie Minute. Well, coming up this Friday, July 10th at 10 p.m., you can watch the uplifting story of how one simple prayer changed the way pro football player Reggie Knox lived. Follow Reggie Knox, played by former Green Bay Packer Reggie White, as he follows God's leading from the world of fame, football, and high finance into an unforgettable place known as high school. Coach Knox turns the high school football team upside down with his goal of building champions and in the meantime does everything he can to impact the life of a special student who's been affected by suicide and drugs. Don't miss Reggie's Prayer this Friday night, July 10th at 10 p.m. Also, on Saturday, July 11th, catch the Billy Graham special, Caught. Although this film was produced by Billy Graham's media team and has biblical themes throughout, we advise that it be watched by mature audiences. Dr. Richard Dobbins once said, Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will charge you more than you want to pay. Zach is with Bill Harris, who this month is exploring the dangers of holding on to pet sins and how deliverance comes from the one who is hanged for our hangups. Well, Bill, you brought to the table this week a heavy topic, but a topic applicable to many people in society. We're talking about sins that just won't let go, those yeah. pet sins, um, something that a lot of people do need to hear about and to address. Yeah, they, they, and they're, they're the sins that can really take away your creativity, your productivity and the like, because if you're trying to move along and be successful in God, sin stands in the way of the progress. Mm -hmm. it, it always holds back, and that's why the writer of Hebrews said, you've, it, it, it's like running a race in Christianity, and you got to lay that aside when you're running a race. You got to take off all the weights yeah. and the thing that's besetting you or the sin that's besetting you so you can run the race. Well, you kick off um, your teaching with a quote that I think is very good. It talks about sin will take you further than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will charge you more than you want to pay. Yeah, and I got that statement from uh, the late Dr. Richard Dobbins, he was a very dear friend of mine, a mm -hmm. Christian psychologist uh, of Emerge Ministries in Akron, Ohio. And very often we don't count the cost of sin. Yeah. And before making that bad choice to see that, that path, that primrose path is gonna lead us down, we need, we need to count the cost of sin and sometimes that can deter us to make the right decision. Well, and I wanna get to, um, because I think a certain part of your teaching because I think a lot of people maybe they do have these sins and maybe they've had them a long time and can be very discouraged almost uh, thinking oh, yeah. what's the point there's a yeah. hopelessness there but before that you set the basis by referencing Psalm 66 it says if I regard iniquity in my heart mm -hmm. the Lord will not hear yeah. sin separates us yes it does it and, and that's that's what God was saying to Adam and Eve in the garden when he said that the day you you sin or eat of the fruit you're gonna die and it was a spiritual death because they did not die physically. They didn't just drop dead after eating the fruit, mm -hmm. but the sin separated them from God. We know that because when he came looking for them that evening, they ran and hid. Yeah. And uh, that's what's so detrimental about it. That's why the Lord loved what David did. When he sinned, he, he repented quickly. <laughs> he got back into yeah. God's graces. And then we can go on because the blood will wash it away. And I don't mean to use that as a crutch to go ahead and sin and then come back sure. to God every time we want to. But if we will quickly repent of sin and get back in his graces, we can do so much better. Well, let's talk about then and what I mentioned, maybe for those people who are discouraged, they feel like they've tried so many times to maybe to let go of these sins, mm -hmm. to get past them. And we hear a lot as Christians, we hear victories in Christ and yeah. you need to let that, but what does that mean uh, in, in terms of action and action steps? What can we do? 
it, you know, and, and some people are going to identify with this because they've already done it. There are areas in my life, particularly when I was a youth coming along, uh -huh. uh, that I had to deal with that. And this is where you're giving it to Christ, and you have to change your environment sometimes. Hmm. Uh, my pastor used to, used to teach about how that he was, a, uh, he was a gang leader in New York City before the Lord saved him. And he had to make sure that he couldn't go n near those places where he used to sin because hmm. they would draw him back into it. Sometimes there has to be a change in our environment when we get saved so that we're not tempted to go back into that. Sometimes yeah. a change in our thinking, we have to change what we're thinking about instead of entertaining the negative thoughts. Yeah. Change in the way we talk. We can't use the same old negative talk. Yeah. And when we fall, we have to understand that God's grace is, <laughs> is, is a forgiving grace and He will take us back up again. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't abandon us. Well, what I, I love that you address is the fact that we are armed and dangerous spiritually. I think yeah. that a lot of times we can get caught up thinking, well, I'm just going to try harder this next time to avoid it. Or I'm going to try. And then, of course, we're not strong enough on our yeah. own. And that can be discouraging. But we are dangerous spiritually. That's and how does that key. work? That works in the regard that, first of all, we, as you said, we try. It's yeah. not us trying. We have to confess it to God. God, I can't help myself in this area. Yeah. And what he does is that scripture talks about pulling down the strongholds and these things that rise up against God and even our thoughts. That thought life is so important, hmm. Zach. Giving that over to God and changing the way we think so that he can help us in these areas of our vulnerability. Yeah, well, and does that start, um, it seems like a lot of that should start just in pure time that we're spending with God. There you I go. think a lot of times we get caught up, we're so frustrated, but we haven't taken the time to spend with him to become armed and dangerous That's key. I, I was preaching at a church Sunday and I was saying some Christians can go through a whole day. They say they love God, but they never want to get in touch with him the whole day. <laughs> you must spend time daily talking to the Lord. It, it, it's like the water you drink, the food you eat, the, the air you breathe. You have to do it daily. Thank you, Zach. Get more strong biblical teaching from Bill Harris every week during his 30-minute program update, Thursday mornings at 9 and Sundays at 1.30 p.m. So, have you been gathering your auction items? Now is the time to bring those to TV44. And Andy, Mark, and Jennifer, you have a few more interesting auction items to share. Well, thank you, Amber. Yes, we do have a few interesting auction items Don't to share. Don't cause anyone to have a seizure at home, please. <laughs> so, we've been sitting at so a bright. really nice outdoor table and chairs that were provided by Audible Furniture. Also from Audible Furniture is this very unique Unique sword. Um, living room decor. Retail value $279. This can be yours. If the price is right. Price. John Ondo <laughs> thought this would make a great pen holder. A great pen holder. Sure, you put them right in there. You could put yeah. Sharpies it's all right over in the there. Place. So then it may be for your office. Maybe it's an office decor item. And what a great conversation piece as people walk in the door. That would make you know, your place of work. So which very... relative gave you that that you are ashamed to show any place else that hey, you put in your office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is very uniquely beautiful. <laughs> and if you have, you know, depending on what your style is, this could just fit nicely. And it does, it lights up. It's not sharp. It's very smooth. Very that doesn't smooth. get hot. So it's even okay well, for children under the age of two. I they won't two. swallow it. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is just one of several items that Audible Furniture has provided us. We've got quite a few other ones that we'll be showing you in the coming weeks, including some really nice uh, living room furniture, um, some special tables, lights, all kinds of different items that just might be the perfect addition to the things you have in your house. What makes it a special table? Well, that you'll find out future on Faith and Friends. Is there something in the back drawer, perhaps <laughs> money or buried treasure? <laughs> hey, I did find out, though. You may remember last year that we had a, uh, a green desk that, that had some special secret items inside. It was an antique desk. Well, I'm not sure if it's positive or negative. It's been, <laughs> it's been, it's been re-donated to the auction. We're going to have it again. With so. the special, th special hidden items? We'll show you that in the coming weeks as well. Auction items are accepted Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you have any questions, give us a call, 419-339-4444. Again, this year's auction date is September the 12th. 
Coming up. A little late for this year, though, because Labor Day is Labor back. Labor Day is late. Yeah, yeah it, late. it did surprise and confuse a lot of people, including myself. <laughs> but yes, it's September 12th is the day that you want to come to the auction. Well, that, of course, as you know, is our largest one-day fundraiser for TV44. Viewer-supported Christian television. But all year long, including the summer, so many of you have stepped up and joined with us. And we're so thankful for your partnership. I want to take a moment just to thank a few people who have... Uh, who have been faithful providers throughout the summer. I want to thank Rita for her donation. She wants to thank you for all of the uh, programming we have. Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Wenger from Bern, Indiana. Mr. Donald Stevenson from Paulding. And Mr. and Mrs. John Vandermark, thank you. Thank you so very much. Betty Lehman as well from Bern, Indiana. So they must have a, a watch club over in Bern. WTLW 44, one of our favorite TV stations. I have it on most of the time. Thank you for the good programming. You're welcome, and thank you for tuning us in across the state border. Don't forget that anyone who supports TV44 through financial gifts, ongoing prayer, or volunteering at places like our auction is a part of this ministry. And we truly, first and foremost, we can't do it without God as the leader, but we can't do it without you as well. And we are so appreciative for everything that you offer us. Throughout the summer months, many people are away from TV. We understand vacations. It's great to be outdoors. Well, don't forget that you might want to consider automatic monthly giving, a safe, reliable way to continue partnering for TV44. Even when things get busy, you can give us a call or email us for more information. Don't forget, for a gift of $100 or more, Dr. Trudy Peeper's new book can be yours. Prevention is the Cure to Cancer, Five Easy Ways. More information on all these items can be found at our website, WTLW.com. And now one final look at scripture. Mark has the passage. You look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 through 33. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense, either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Through all things, do it through the glory of God. Something to, to keep in mind as uh, we go into this uh, month of July. No question about it. Thank you for being a part of our lives this last 30 minutes. Hope you have a great rest of your week.